it was more like in all the things that I was doing, it was more, some days it was drudgery, other days it was duty, and very rarely did I get back to that delight phase. Do you need a spiritual spark? Are you feeling run down or run over? Are you ready to eliminate the spiritual ups and downs? This is Fresh Faith in Real Life. Let's restore life in your walk with Christ. We'll dive into our featured guest interviews, biblical devotional thoughts, answers to your questions, and more. Your walk with Christ isn't meant to be a performance. It's all about relationship. Let's get to know Jesus and experience fresh faith in real life. Here's John Fugler. Welcome to episode number three of this brand new podcast. And here's what's coming on this show. How can a hard driver pull back and discover the life-giving discipline of rest? You'll meet someone who's done that. We'll explore encouragement and walking in the light of Christ. And you can access a free resource that can ignite your walk with Christ in 2022 as we look forward to the new year. This is Fresh Faith in Real Life, where we lead you on a path to freedom from the bondage of performance Christianity. And in this episode, you'll meet someone who is experiencing fresh faith in real life. We do that on every episode. Every Wednesday, we release a new episode, and you're just in the ground floor. This December, we're launching our very first three on one day, <laughs> December 1st. I don't know if you listen to all three, you'll, uh, but you can go back and, and listen to the first two, and it's been a real joy to be able to do this. My name is John Fugler. And I'm a recovering performaholic for Jesus. Yeah, I'm a former athlete. Uh, I'm an author. Of course, I'm a podcaster. Here I am, a Christian radio visionary, a, a ministry leader. I'm a husband. I'm a father and a grandfather. Got eight grandchildren. And most importantly, I want to know Jesus more each day. So I lean on Philippians 3.8. I got it posted right here. What is more, I consider everything a loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. If that's good enough for Paul, it's good enough for me. I'm also the founder and CEO of Fresh Faith 24-7. It's a movement of believers desperate to know Jesus. And we lead you on a path to freedom from the bondage of performance Christianity. So if you're stuck in your Christian walk, if you need a jolt, if you need a fire lit under you, hey, visit FreshFaith247.com and join our life-changing membership. It is complimentary. I'm ready to go. Had a good bowl of ice cream, and I may fall asleep by the time this is over. But no, the sugar rush has has really done a good job for me. So uh, I got my ice cream down. Uh, we're you know heading towards Christmas and uh, Advent time, and I did a little research here to see how Christmas is being celebrated in other countries. Now, if you're listening in one of these countries, I may be all wrong, but it was on the internet. So it must be true. We'll see. Uh, how about Japan, which is uh, really an unreached nation? Less than 2% are Christians. And here's what they do on Christmas Day. Fried chicken is often eaten on Christmas Day. And it's the busiest time of the year for restaurants, such as KFC. And people can place orders at their local fast food restaurant in advance. Uh, there was an advertising campaign by KFC a while ago called Kentucky for Christmas. Kentucky for Christmas, which was very successful and made KFC popular for Christmas. So that's that's Japan. Now, Ghana, which is a, has a high Christian population, Ghana, Af Africa, and West Africa, um, Christmas Eve night is... By the way, if, if you're listening to Japan and I got this all wrong, please email me, john at freshfaith247.com. Uh, in Ghana, Christmas Eve night is a time when celebrations really start with church services that have drumming and dancing. Uh, children often put on a nativity play or other drama. Then choirs come out to sing. and People, people come out in front of uh, the, the priests or pastors, I guess, to dance. Uh, songs are mostly sung in languages that people can understand best, and it makes them feel that God speaks their language. I like that. I really like that. Uh, sometimes these services and dancing go on all night long. 
So if you're from Ghana, if I got this right, thumbs up. If I don't, please correct me. Let's move to Cuba and see how they celebrate Christmas. Christmas was banned in Cuba from 1969 till 1998. And then Fidel Castro, um, you know, he didn't want any religious celebrations at that time. And Christmas then was made a public holiday again in 1998. And that was because the Pope visited the country. During the time it was banned, though, some people still celebrated Christmas, but only only in a very quiet way. Uh, now Christmas celebrations are, are much more widespread. Christmas Eve is called Noche Buena, which means the good night. And I'll tell you, I don't speak Spanish well, so sorry, I know I butchered that. And it's when families have their main meal and celebration together. So that's on Christmas Eve. And the traditional main dish is roast pork. Some families like to roast a whole pig. I had pork for dinner tonight. Uh, normally served with fried plantains, rice, and vegetables. And dessert is often rice pudding or sweet potato pudding. So there you got, you got the meal there. Um, more people are now going to a midnight mass church service after eating their dinner meal on Christmas Eve. Uh, and Cuba, of course, a very high uh, Catholic population. So midnight mass is a big thing there. So that's how things are happening around the world as we get set for Christmas. And we know that we want to use this time to center ourselves on Jesus. And not just at Christmas. Uh, I uh, My heart is that you can center your heart on Jesus and really know Christ, as Paul said. Maybe this Christmas is a turning point for you where you will do that. What I want to do is let you know about this uh, special offer I have for you. It's it's free, and it's a 21-day fresh faith experience devotional, renewing your walk with Christ. I wrote this with, with a variety of of topics in the Christian life in here, all the way from from faith to joy to prayer, um, even encouragement. We'll be talking about encouragement on this show. Rest. We'll be talking about rest on this show. Um, and there's 21 days in here. And my heart is that you spend each day five or 10 minutes reading through this devotional, considering the scripture that's in there, and using time to journal a little bit. If uh, you download it, you can print each page and then journal or just journal in your own journal after reading uh, the PDF version. You can go to freshfaith247.com to pick up your free 21-day Fresh Faith Experience devotional. There'll be in the menu uh, a button says 21 day, and that's what you push, and then you can go ahead and get this download. I want you to have this, so please um, go get it. Go get it. A lot of people have, and they're enjoying it, and that's for you. And there's a bonus with it, too. You get a free membership in Fresh Faith 24-7 along with that. And what is Fresh Faith 24-7? I'm glad you asked. Uh, it's, um, it, it's a membership of like-minded believers pursuing Jesus. That's what it is. We are so focused on knowing Jesus, so focused on moving from performance to relationship. We'll talk more about that in our, our show in the conversation I had with our guests, but from, from performance to relationship. And it's an opportunity for you to reignite your relationship with Jesus. And when you order your 21-day Fresh Faith experience, uh, you can also join Fresh Faith 24-7. I would, in, I would uh, really encourage you to do that. Our interview is coming up in just a few minutes. Uh, just a powerful, fast-paced interview that you're going to hear from someone who his life has changed. When you talk about performance to relationship, you'll hear from him exactly how that has worked out in his life in the last two years. So we'll get to that in a moment. I want to encourage you with encouragement. That's uh, a focus as we enter into our a short devotional thought to center ourselves on Jesus and knowing Jesus. The devotionals that I write, even the 21 Day Fresh Faith Experience, really centers on knowing Christ. It's not a do this, do that. It's a heart thing. And that's what I want to share with you uh, in this episode. And it's about encouragement. We all need encouragement, don't we? Especially these days. Um, and I remember after several days of rain and gray, I woke up one morning 
to a, a beautiful, bright blue sky. And the stunning contrast lifted my spirits immediately. I'm one who responds to sunlight. I don't like darkness. I don't like gray. And so sunlight, blue sky, that was for me. And there wasn't a cloud to be seen. Uh, I could peer into the heavens, it seemed like. I, I was charged up to head into the day. Then I thought about what Jesus does for us. I am the light of the world, he says in John 8, 12. I am the light of the world. And there's nothing more wonderful than the light of Christ shining in our midst. As we celebrate Christmas, you know, light is such a, such a, a, a big thing and we use light and, um, you know, lights everywhere. And for us, it should represent the light of Christ, reminding us that Christ is the light of the world. And when we're in the presence of Jesus, he lights up everything, even on a cold, dark day. In fact, it's on those dismal days that we need his light more than ever. His light shines so bright. He frees us from the discouragement that, that presses in on us. You may be there right now and the light of Christ. In John 8, 12, getting back to that same verse, Jesus tells us that he, he infuses life. I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. The light of life. What an incredible promise. And that morning, as I looked uh, across the horizon and gazed at the blue sky all around me, with a deep breath, I, I took in the view. It went forever. I remember it now. Even to this day, uh, the trees seem sharper in the warm sunlight. The, the air was clear. It's just one of those days. So I encourage you to step into the presence of Jesus and let him shine his light on you. His light is himself. Let him shine on you. Let him shine on your day. See life in his light rather than letting the dark things of life dominate your view. Look above the horizon. Look above your troubles, obstacles, burdens, pain, uh, bad family relationships, which emerge during Christmas, uh, you know, when we get together with family. Oh, look above the horizon and let Jesus light the sky because he'll do that. He promises it. Just, just come to him in prayer. Uh, do you long for the light of life? No matter what the circumstances Jesus' light shines. He's con conquered Satan. He's conquered sin. His light gives you an eternal perspective for he's the one who rules the heavens and the earth. He shows us the big picture when we're in his presence. He gives us hope. He gives us confidence. And Jesus does this in a supernatural way. When the light of Christ shines in and around you, it changes your heart and life. As I shared this truth recently with a friend, he texted me with a blessing, and I've since written it down, and I want to share it with you. He said this, The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. He quoted Numbers 6, 24 to 26. <laughs> may his face shine on you. He didn't even know that I was considering the light of Christ and and it says, concludes with, and give you peace. Peace. And that's what Christmas is all about, right? Where Jesus brought peace. And um, wow. Let me just encourage you to have an encouraging day walking in the light of Christ. Amen? Amen. Now we turn to our conversation. Our conversation is uh, with Ralph Stores. And Ralph was a driver. You'll get that right away. I, I think he still is. Ralph is also a teacher. And a little bit of another secret here about Ralph is, is that he likes alliteration. And you're going to hear that a lot. He just, I, I think he converses in alliteration. He teaches in alliteration. He is a gifted teacher. We're going to have this conversation. I had it with him and you're going to hear it. And you're going to be taught all the way through. It's like several mini lessons through this. But within that is really the story of Ralph's life. As God released him from bondage into freedom in his relationship with Jesus. 
you'll hear about um, how he kind of faked it for a while. People thought he had it all together. Uh, he um, is going to talk about his performance lifestyle. Uh, he'll be talking about where he was saved, and you're going to find that interesting considering one of the countries we covered. And you're talking about digital devices, our devices, and the tech world, and and how it uh, it it throws a wrench in our lives, and how difficult it is to rest. We'll we'll be discussing rest quite a bit in our conversation together. Ralph is uh, uh, he serves alongside me at uh, Transworld Radio TWR. He uh, is also part time as a pastor, leads a men's ministry at his church, and has a long history of teaching and pastoring, and uh, yet he's, you know, also uh, serves daily, and we can, he's going to step off out of his pastoral role and come alongside us in this conversation. So my good friend, Ralph Stores. I know in the last uh, two or three years, you and I have gotten to know each other, and I've I've walked alongside you literally in your journey because we've taken <laughs> a lot of walks together, and I'm hearing what God's doing in your life, and I wanted other people to hear about that too. But before we get into that, I've told everybody what you've been doing in ministry, but you're also a family man. And uh, tell us about uh, your wife, your kids, your family. Yeah, I have uh, my wife, Tammy. We've been married for 37 years, coming up on 38 in September. I have three terrific children, uh, a daughter uh, 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 and two sons. And uh, well, my daughter is, uh, they, they, we have three grandchildren. Um, I have uh, Abigail, the youngest daughter, and then Nathaniel and Jeremiah, my two grandsons. And then my, uh, and that's for my daughter, Rachel. Uh, just in case you're wondering with the grands and everything, they live about 6.23 miles away from the house. Uh, <laughs> just, just thought I'd let you know that. And then I, my oldest son is a sign language interpreter. He does not only the interpreting for our deaf, but actually works in the public school system, just a few miles away in Durham County. And then my youngest is uh, 19. So yes, I did have a little bit of a spread from, from a 36 year old daughter to a, uh, to a 30 year old son and then a 19 year old son, uh, C. J. Caleb. And he is, uh, he's a joy also. He's still here at the house and stuff, but is working and uh, musician, worship leader at church. So, uh, yeah, uh, wonderful to have the family nearby. Well, they keep you young, don't they? Just to... Yes, they do. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, speaking of young, I'm going to uh, kind of brag on you a little bit here. You're quite the runner, too. You talk about 6.23 miles. I bet <laughs> you know that because you've run that distance. <laughs> uh, yes, I have. Uh, I, I've run it from the house before in, in one of my afternoon Saturday runs. And uh, yeah, John, I was a, uh, an athlete early in my career and ran, uh, ran the mile, ran, uh, you know, uh, five, five and 10 Ks and did even a couple marathons. But uh, then I stopped running for quite some time. And actually, uh, my, uh, while I've always been uh, athletic and healthy, um, uh, went down a journey. Uh, and as we talk a little bit about some of the things that have happened with rest and other things, a lot of that had to do with how I took care of myself physically. And so about two and a half years ago, really began aggressively running again uh, to the point where I'm able to run six, uh, six days a week, average about five to six miles a day. So uh, yeah, that's been, uh, that's been a lot of fun. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, so Ralph, when did you come to know Christ? How long ago was that? Yeah, I was actually uh, 14 years old. So it's been a, it's been a long time. I'm uh, uh, I know I don't look at John, but I'm, I'm 66, and some are probably going to say, hey, I thought he was older than that, <laughs> but I'm 66. I came to Christ when I was 14, so you can do the math there, and yeah. believe it or not, uh, I was overseas. Uh, my dad was in the military. We were in Japan at the time, and I actually got saved in Japan mm. uh, through a family that was there. I always tell everybody my testimony is I got saved watching The Simpsons, and they sort of look at me, and they go, what? That's what I'm thinking. Um, first of all, they weren't even around back in the 60s and stuff. Well, it was a family that brought me to Christ that I saw model uh, just what family and love. I came from a pretty dysfunctional home. Nobody else in my family was saved when I came to Christ at 14. And uh, I watched uh, Dale Simpson and his father and, and, and sister and mother 
um, as, as they modeled love. They, they had something that I just didn't have in my own family, in my own home. And they invited me into their home, and then they invited me to church. And as a result, there was a, a Baptist plant uh, outside of the base that we were at. And first time I heard that gospel presentation in that church, uh, I walked right up to the front, and uh, it was uh, it was uh, quite a wonderful time. Oh, that's amazing. That's amazing. Yeah. I, the same thing for me. First time I heard the gospel, I marched up front in a small church yeah. from the back row. Yeah. <laughs> so I can relate to that. I can relate to that. That's really cool. So you and I both been Christians now for ages, as they say, uh, but we know that there's seasons, there's ups and downs, and as our, our viewers are watching this, listeners are, are hearing this, we're, we're talking about fresh faith, we're talking about that, that freedom from the bondage of performance Christianity. Yeah. You're an athlete, I'm an athlete, longtime Christian workers, and I don't know your whole story yet, so I'm going to find out a little bit about this. I know we have a kindred spirit in, in some ways, but let me just ask this question. Um, describe Ralph Stores three years ago as a mature believer. Oof. Yeah, and, and, and you and, and when I say the word mature, you're going to go, well, based on the direction that you were going, you were going toward burnout and everything. <laughs> and, and I'll tell you right now, John, just in asking that question, this is what I love so much about the premise of what you're doing with fresh faith of people who have been believers for a while and may have gotten, may have started out with fresh faith on a regular basis and then sort of started moving in a direction where things got more performance and things and, and stagnant. But I would say three years ago, uh, John, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a type A personality. You know me, I'm a hard charger, a hard driver. Um, you know, uh, the, uh, I had I had two gears, uh, fast and faster, and uh, I didn't know the meaning of the word rest. Uh, and and I would say that based on where I was going at church, even though I was active in church and engaged with my family, engaged with my children, uh, and 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 working and 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 aggressively going after the gospel and and working hard. Uh, traveling overseas all the time and on the go, on the go, on the go. Uh, I can tell you, uh, it got to the point where um, I, I was, I, I was nothing but a, I was a Martha all the way. And, and uh, there were fewer and fewer times where I really felt that intimacy with God that, that, that I was seeking. And so um, this is going on coming up on two years, 19, 20 months now, uh, a a switch flipped. I made it. I made a couple very significant, uh, uh, very significant changes in my life. Well, let me that, go back uh, to where where you're at there. That you described yeah. that. I want to camp on that for just sure. a minute. Uh, did you you knew something was wrong? You knew something was missing. Yeah. How would you describe your your walk with Christ at the time? Uh, very performance, and perf uh, it was much more performance and perfunctory. It, 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 it was more like, and all the things that I was doing, it was more, some days it was drudgery, other days it was duty, and very rarely did I get back to that delight phase, mm. and that is what I was really, uh, I could, you know, uh, a busy schedule, uh, doing all the things for the Lord, but not moving in that direction of intimacy with the Lord. And I just felt that there was a drift, even my, my Bible reading, uh, I'm, I'm a teacher and stuff. I love to teach. I love to uh, preach, but my Bible reading, my prayer life, um, uh, other, other spiritual disciplines were definitely taking on much more of a Perf, uh, much of a performance type of a thing, rather than those disciplines being the means to greater intimacy mm. with God. And those are, that's the journey I've been down, John, the last uh, almost two years now in, in recapturing that. And, you know, so you were a doer. You, you oh, were, I'm, you were, I'm a doer. I, you were I preaching, you were teaching, you were a full-time Christian service. And, and so on the outside, did anybody detect there was something wrong on the outside or were you putting up a good front? I, you know, probably putting up a pretty good front. Uh, you know, those closest to you sometimes can see, Hey, I'm seeing a little bit of cracks in the wall here. You look, uh, 
you look stressed, um, you don't look relaxed or rested and everything. You know, if you take a look at the word relax in the Bible, you know how they have antonyms in, in, in the thesaurus? They have the opposites. Mm -hmm. uh, you would have seen Ralph's name at the opposite <laughs> end of that. To try to put rest and relaxation in the same sentence or the same word with Ralph stores, that would not have happened. You know, my wife would, says, you don't know how to relax. Mm. And, uh, and some of it started, uh, you know, uh, John, there's a lot of... Um, while there are spiritual and, and things that are going on, there are also pressures and things that are going on. What was going on in technology, the always being connected, mm -hmm. the, uh, uh, you know, the, the digital side of, of always being on call, always having the cell phone mm -hmm. there, always, you know, always, always, always. That was just it. And never just taking time uh, for the simplicity of, of following Christ. And how would you, it, it, how would you describe how would you paint the picture and describe your life today then? Who is Ralph Storrs today? I would say, without, without trying to, to make it sound like all of a sudden I've become the guru on rest or anything like that, I think today, if you use, if you use the dictionary, um, Ralph may be uh, one of the words in the thesaurus that you would look for for rest. I, I really have made a, a huge change. And it was a spiritual change. It was a physical change. And it, I, I think it was an emotional change, a series of decisions that I made that uh, I'm not, haven't, I wouldn't say I've arrived, but man, the journey over the last two, 20 months or so has been so satisfying and so relaxing. You know, it's almost I started that journey actually before COVID-19 started. And, you know, people have talked about COVID, of, of, of God putting the world on a timeout and stuff. Um, in many ways, as a result of the journey that I was on, as a result of COVID, I've actually thrived. I, I, I consider myself much more thriving mm. than I did beforehand. And COVID... 19 and some of the circumstances around it reinforced the decisions and the things that God was speaking into my heart um, to where it made a, it made a pretty radical change. And um, John, I think, you know, just in the time that we've known each other, um, I think you can you can tell that that I've, uh, I've I've had some definite changes in practices of yes. just how I govern my life. I, and I've noticed that. And I reflect back on that whole concept of rest. And I, we were reading a book together called Rest. Yes. I pulled it up on my, my iPad here. If I put it up on the screen, you wouldn't be able to see it. There's a lot of glare. Rest. And the subtitle is Why You Get More Done When You Work Less. Yeah. <laughs> and I highly recommend that to our viewers here. You got to get this book. Uh, it's called Rest. The subtitle, Why You Get More Done When You Work Less. Now, maybe a lot of books called Rest out there. Make sure you get that sub subtitle. The, um, <laughs> the author's name, that's a little <laughs> bit harder to pronounce than the title. <laughs> Alex Sojung Kim Pong. So P-A-N-G is the last name. I would highly recommend that. It's not, it's not a Christian book, but it speaks to the practicality of rest. I, I just found this book fascinating. I know you did too, Ralph. I did. And John, actually, it's been quite a journey. I would say if, um, if the one thing in the last 20 months that was just so rekindled, that was so refreshing, is I've always been an, a, a ferocious reader. And that came back. I began reading. And I have a list of probably 25 books now. And John, I know every time I turned around, I said, John, you got to try this one. You got to try this one. And, and I have, I've tried a lot of those. And you poke at me. And, and it started with, I did a biblical study on Sabbath, on rest, and looked at what the Old and New Testament said about the rest and the Sabbath. And it was so amazing, the times that Jesus talked about how, uh, and the Lord talked about how Israel profaned the sabbath and 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 you know and then jesus makes that classic statement um 
the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. And, and the Pharisees got it just completely and totally mixed up. But I began reading that book, uh, a book by Adam Mabry, a pastor called The Art of Rest. We, mm. John, we recently wrote a, uh, read a book called He Sat Down, So yep. Can You. Um, and then I looked at a series of both spiritual as well as professional books. Um, I started looking at people like Eisenhower and Winston Churchill and, and all these guys uh, back in the years and how they got so much done. They wrote volumes and stuff. And yet their lives, when you read their autobiographies and stuff, you see that they rest was a, a rhythm of their life that brought about rest and creativity and, and, and uh, relaxation. As a matter of fact, it's proven through this book, Rest and others, that when you take, instead of seeing recreation as, oh, he must be lazy or something or not doing anything is somehow, if you're not on call 24 seven, doing something all the time, that you're uh, lazy or something and, and, and not driven enough. The opposite is true. Some of your best solutions and creativity actually from the workplace come while I'm running, while I'm reading, while I'm in recreation, while I'm resting. Uh, a lot of the, and, and, and it, there's actually physiological things that happen in terms of the creativity and the connection mm. and stuff. And so this journey of exhausting the scriptures when it came to uh, when it came to rest and, and, and rhythms, uh, and then reading all these books. And then in terms of workflow and how I was working also. Let me, let um, me ask you a question before you yeah. jump into that. Just you mentioned uh, in the scriptures, of course, uh, come to me all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Yeah. That's like that the, my, that's the rest verse, verse <laughs> in the Bible, and we all go yes. to that one. And there's probably, you know, we go to two or three others. Uh, yep. where, where do you camp? What did the Lord open up for you? And where do you, what do you keep going back to in the word? Well, I definitely camped on, 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 on that passage, Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 through 30. And then the, the, the passage with Martha and Mary, you know, I, I read that and I read it and, and, you know, most of us, we turn around, especially if you're a type A personality, we somehow always end up somehow thinking we have to defend Martha uh, because that's where we find ourselves so much. And we go, you know, Hey, I can understand why Martha was upset. You know, her sister was doing this and this and that. And Jesus was not so much saying what Martha, you're wrong for doing things, but he very clearly said, Mary has chosen the better thing and it will not be taken away from her. And, and it was that whole area of sitting at the feet of Jesus. Um, I, I camped on that area uh, several years ago. I read this book two times a year, whether I think I need it or not. And, and you would think that I would have really gotten it. And I would have never been in that rat race type of uh, uh, frenzy from three years ago. But uh, Chuck Swindoll wrote this little book called Intimacy with the Almighty. Mm. And he talked about four principles, the need for simplicity, for reordering our lives. And actually, I actually did a lot of study, uh, John, on essentialism and minimalism. And you and I have a book that we really like also called The One Thing. You know, in essentialism, it's the, uh, the most of the world is the undisciplined pursuit of more. It's always more, 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 more. And essentialism says, the disciplined pursuit of less, but better. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's how we order our lives and how we focus on those few things. But going back on those passages, uh, Chuck Swindoll talked about the need for simplicity. He talked about silence. He talked about solitude. And he talked about surrendering to the Lord. And uh, the one that I've really been camping on recently is that whole surrender, that mm -hmm. yielding to the Lord. But all, but that's the scripture verses where I go to, and then, and then just going to Exodus, and it says, <laughs> you should, you know, the Sabbath. Now a lot of people think the whole Sabbath, you know, Jesus is our rest, and and I understand all that, but that does not negate the the need 
for rhythms, for rest. Um, you know, a lot of the things that fell into play was relaxation, eating right, exercising, um, the, the spiritual disciplines and rhythms of life that, that, that I was going through. And it, it, it really, it really made a difference, John. And I just, I just became, uh, I became ruthless mm -hmm. in the elimination of some of those things. That's that almost was, seems contradictory, doesn't it? You yes, are ruthless. It, yeah. But, um, you know, I talk about the fresh faith 24 seven is a movement of believers desperate to know Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. And there is something active about that desperation of knowing Jesus, the ruthless, the ruthlessness of finding rest. I, I'm a firm believer in rest, Ralph. Uh, yes. Let me ask you this. As you um, look at your relationship with God now, that intimacy with Jesus, mm -hmm. how is that different because of what's happened over the last 20 months or so. Yeah, John, I'm, I'm actually getting, I, I'm getting goosebumps. I'm not showing you my arms right now, but I get goosebumps when I think about that. Because as uh, three years ago, as I was, you know, didn't know the definition of the word rest, I, I, if it would have hit me in the head, you know, um, the, and I talked about how even in my spiritual walk, I wasn't resting at all. It was always go, 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 go you know, read another verse, or study another scripture, do this, do that. And one of the things that happened for me in, the, in that desire for intimacy was a real change in how I, was, how I viewed the spiritual disciplines, John. Um, you know, when we look at the spiritual disciplines of, of prayer and the Bible and fasting and giving and, and, and th the things that we look at, journaling and things like that, you know, a lot of people, and I think I got caught up in it too, the disciplines became the means in themselves. They sort of represented the marks of maturity and, and spirituality, and that wasn't the case at all. It's the disciplines are the avenue toward greater intimacy with Christ. And let me explain that. Um, I liken it to the scaffolding. It, you know, you look at this beautiful, you look at this building, and this building is needing to be restored or something. And, and builders will put up a scaffolding. And the purpose of the scaffolding is to have access to the building so that, so that they can repair or they can look at it or, uh, and, 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 and refresh it or restore it or something like that. And if you look at uh, that building in, 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 in one way as your relationship with God of getting toward God, in other words, the disciplines are the means to get to God. At the end of the day, after that building is finished, nobody says, wow, look at that scaffolding. Isn't it beautiful? They go, look at that beautiful building. And I think that's the way that I was treating the disciplines, John. I was treating the disciplines as an end in themselves, as the scaffolding, rather than what the scaffolding was designed to do, to get me into a, uh, to a greater position to see the building. The, I read the Bible not so I can check it off my list and say, oh, got that one done, so I must be spiritually mature. I prayed for 20 minutes today. You know, it's, it's, it's devotion, not duration sometimes. Uh, it's not how long am I saying? It's, it's, it's the devotion to that. And the disciplines really moved from duty to delight. Mm. And, uh, I de and the scripture says, I delight to do thy word, O Lord. And what I found is, as I was reading, the purpose for reading is to get to know and to have greater intimacy with the Lord. My purpose for prayer is to be able to communicate with the living God. My purpose for fasting was to say, God, um, this is how much I miss you and love you. I'm, I'm, I'm willing to fast, whether it be from food or from something else, because I have this desperation and this deep desire to know you more intimately. And so I think one of the things that really flipped the switch was how I was viewing the disciplines, and I had really allowed the disciplines to drive me rather than using those disciplines to draw me closer to the Lord. So it was a, it went from a driving 
force to a drawing force. Yeah, it's like the that, cart and, before the horse, and now you yeah. get the horse in front of the cart. Exactly. This is good. Oh, that, exactly. that is really insightful. Uh, as as people are listening and watching right now, they're saying, man, this sounds great. This is wonderful. I think I get it. So <laughs> tell me, what do you battle now? You're in you're in a transformation. You yeah. told me it's you haven't you haven't arrived yet, but you're in a transformation. So how do you battle that balance now between doing and being, between the intimacy and the performing? Yeah. How are you how are you how do you check yourself when you find yourself going in the wrong direction? Well, I think number one is it's, uh, uh, you know, uh, allow the Holy Spirit, of course, to speak to you through the word and he'll, he'll do that. But also, I think it's important, you know, John, you and I have cultivated a pretty great relationship over the last three years. And, and I consider you uh, a, a very strong colleague and a friend who, um, uh, and, and what I'm getting at is accountability here. Mm -hmm. I think there has to be a level of accountability. Now that you're going to say, well, isn't that legalist? No, accountability is fantastic. You know, if if you see something off and you go, Ralph, well, you're a little bit a little bit off today. Are you falling back into the trap? Because Satan loves nothing more. I, I, I tell you, the the watchword for our day, John, is distraction. The phone, the internet, the news, uh, activity after activity, and you have to ruthlessly guard yourself against the distractions that come. And I find the moment I allow a distraction to come in place where Satan will throw something out there or a distraction and it'll sort of catch my attention and, 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 and go is when I'm prone to, 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 mm -hmm. to, to fall sort of fall off the wagon in that area. Um, but I, I tell you, John, it has been so refreshing and rewarding in my own walk with the Lord of, of, of uh, Scripture has come alive. I've been a teacher for 40 years, but Scripture's coming alive like it hasn't before. And, uh, and, and, and it's not the Scripture in an end in itself. It's just I'm learning more about the Savior and, 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 and that. And I just think that, that this issue busyness is a proxy for productivity. We think we think busyness and we wear it with a badge of honor. And I would say, John, the moment I allow myself to get caught back up into any type of a busy track and I, for one moment, stop that ruthless protection of my time, uh, of, of my time with the Lord, uh, then I'm then I'm going to go down a spiral that that I don't want to go down. So that I would say is probably the one thing. Uh, number one, having an accountability partner, having somebody that I can talk to and say, hey, um, uh, you know, and we don't all have perfect days all the time and everything. But I would say uh, it's a completely different picture uh, of from three years ago. It's it's now. There's a whole lot more days of that closeness and that intimacy and fewer days where I'm battling it. I would say to anybody out there that's grappling with that right now, um, the, the, that first decision has to be a radical, ruthless decision that says, I don't want this anymore. Mm -hmm. And then find the help that you need. Uh, I didn't have all the answers. And so as you and I started exchanging books and authors and stuff and through the scriptures, find other people that can help you walk through that journey. You know, uh, one of the authors in, uh, that you and I follow says, you are the you are the sum total of the five people that you hang around with the most yes. or something like that, you know, and, and uh, I want to hang around people that are drawing closer to the Lord, that are the Marys that are sitting at the feet of Jesus. And uh, I want to learn from them. And, you know, they, they always tell you, if you want to, if you're a leader and you think that you're a six or a seven or something, I, you always hang around with eight, nines and tens <laughs> and stuff so that you can become a better. Yeah, if you, yeah. if you want to become better at rest, go to guys that have experienced it, that are doing it. You might have are, to look uh, long and hard for that too. Yeah. <laughs> Ralph, my question to you is, 
in real life. I know you set aside uh, your teaching on Sundays, you're uh, heavily involved in, in, in your church there, but Sunday is kind of your day of rest, really. What mm -hmm. is your pattern? What do you do, on a, practically speaking, in order to rest and recharge and get into that into some intimacy with Christ? What's, what's your story? You know, uh, John, I, I do. And, and, and I, I want to point out while I still observe Sunday as a day of rest, not from so much a le not as a legalistic standpoint, it's I have chosen that just like I run six days a week, I give my body a rest on, on, on Sunday. And with it, I do the others as well. Um, and, you know, uh, we, we think that just doing nothing People think, you know, uh, how can you just do nothing? Um, uh, you can. You can just sit. Uh, I, I sit on my porch and just look and, 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 and just meditate and just relax and, and, and read. Uh, again, I love to read. But I, I think there's an important um, part in your question, John, while uh, it is important to get that full day of rest, like on a Sunday. And I know for a lot of pastors, let's say you got a pastor that's joining your fresh faith team here. A lot of times the pastor is on all day and that is anything but a day of rest for him. Choose another day, choose some time. But I think the other thing, John, that's important is we, we read another book, uh, John, that, uh, that was written by a, a lady uh, talked about rhythms and uh, rest and rhythms of life. And we need to have those rhythms on a daily basis. In other words, there needs to be rest every day. There needs to be that mindset of, of quietness before the Lord and rest every day. And I think it goes, I, I think it has to do with our physical as well as the spiritual and emotional well-being. John, we cannot neglect the physiological side of things of uh, uh, of eating healthy and getting sleep. Uh, and, and John, you know, a lot of people think, oh, uh, well, I'll catch up on my sleep on Sunday and I'll just really sleep in on that day. Uh, it doesn't work that way. You, you know, you don't all of a sudden have this residual backlog. You can't bank you sleep. Think. You can't <laughs> bank it. But, but John, uh, for me, uh, the Sunday, I do go to church, and if I teach, I'm teaching or something like that. But when I come home at the end of the day, uh, we relax. We, 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 we'll play some games. We'll do some board games. Uh, we'll go visit the grandchildren. Or, uh, uh, and, and it's not uncommon at all where, you know, everybody goes, okay, Opa or Dad's going up to get some of his quiet time. And I will come up in this room that I'm sitting in right now. I've got my chair, I've got uh, the environment is set up for rest. Uh, there aren't televisions in here, there aren't other things. And I just simply disconnect from internet, I disconnect from the phone, I disconnect um, at, at times, also disconnect, you know, as much as we're relationship made for relationships, sometimes you got to disconnect period from people. So it's just you alone and the Lord. And um, I have just found uh, I, I can sit in, in here. I can have some praise and worship music going. Mm. Um, a, a, a lot. I'm of loving time, the way you're describing it already. I can just feel it. I'm, uh, I'm uh, restful just <laughs> listening to you describe this. A lot of times the rest for me is sometimes to um, uh, is writing you, John, you're a, you're a writer and uh I will I will journal and just how the Lord's working in my heart and and how it, how it's going, and um, I'll I'll almost sort of take a uh, um, an inventory. You know, uh, mm. am, am, am I am I am I agitated about anything right now? Am I anxious about anything? These are those times to just release the anxiety, to be still, and know that I am God. You know that verse. One of the other verses that really yes. spoke to me during this is Psalm 46:10, and it says, "Be still and know that I am God." And and that word literally means cease striving. Now, <laughs> if you think about that for a minute, cease, stop, stop, mm. stop mm. doing, cease striving, and know that I am God. 
I pray that through what you're doing, may this tribe increase. Well, you certainly got something out of that interview. We covered a lot of ground. As I told you before we went into it, it was one mini lesson after another. And did you catch the alliteration? Yeah, I'm I'm sure you did. It's hard to come away from these conversations with one takeaway, but I like to do that so we're not overwhelmed and we just move on with life and kind of forget what's behind us. But if we can grab one thing and take it with us in our journey to know Christ, to know Jesus, then that's a good thing. Uh, And my takeaway is actually alliteration here. I've got three Ds to share with you that Ralph brought up. And the thing that hit me is drudgery and duty versus delight. The time we spend with God, is it drudgery and duty or is it delight? And Ralph moved from drudgery and duty to delight. When he stopped, he slowed down, not only physically, but spiritually, emotionally. His calendar uh, slowed down, his schedule slowed down, where he had time to enjoy his relationship with Jesus. So drudgery and duty versus delight. And where do you stand right now? Are you in the the duty phase in position, or are you in, in delight? And we all want to be in the delight place. Um, as I've said earlier, Fresh Faith 24-7 is a movement of believers desperate to know Jesus, desperate to know Jesus. And that is the delight phase. Now, there's three Ds here. I got a fourth one I'll throw at you since I want to top Ralph on his alliteration. Uh, and that is disconnect. Disconnect. It's hard to find delight when we're always connected uh, to our devices, always connected to our schedules, always connected to something. And we need to just get away and disconnect in order to experience that delight and get away from duty. So moving from delight to uh, from duty to delight. We don't want to have drudgery. So I hope you enjoyed that and, and got a lot out of it. It would be great if uh, you wanted to share with me what your your high points were. John at FreshFaith247.com. Uh, a couple more things here. First, I, I had mentioned at the outset your chance to win something big. We're giving away uh, my entire collection of 30-day devotionals, entire collection, Your Life with God, 30 Days of Joy, Your Life with God, 30 Days of Faith. I've got 30 Days of Rest. If your interest is peaked here, then maybe you could win this collection and get rest. we got courage, encouragement, prayer. I've got 30 Days with Jesus, and and then one that isn't a devotional, but it's applicable. Uh, Corona season continues, a Christian response to the pandemic. How are we supposed to respond? to this ongoing pandemic that just doesn't seem to be ending. Uh, I believe that we learn a lot from the word and especially from the life of Joseph in this. I'm giving away this entire collection, the whole library, as we celebrate the launch of Fresh Faith in Real Life, this podcast in our third episode and giving you a chance to win. Here's how you do it. You just go to freshfaith247.com, freshfaith247.com. And in the menu bar, you'll see contest. You click on that and you enter one entry per family, please. This is going all through the month of December. And on January 1st, I am going to draw the winner, announce the winner live at noon Eastern time on the Fresh Faith 24-7 Facebook page. And the winner will be notified by email, so you don't have to be present to win. But uh, the fun of it is I'm going to have all these names, and I'll draw the winner, announce the winner on January 1st. I'll tell you more about that. So make sure you enter the contest. Uh, a couple other closing things here. Questions. Questions. Anybody? Raise your hand. Uh, if you have questions about anything you heard on this podcast, the topics, any comments, uh, please send them to me, John at FreshFaith247.com. I'll have links in the show notes to all these things where I'm mentioning email addresses and and websites and all that and where to enter the contest. I'll have you just click the links in the show notes. But we're going to, starting in January, we're going to have a, a segment of the show that is uh, answering your questions about what it means to know Christ, what it means to have intimacy with Jesus. What what thoughts do you have, questions do you have that either I can answer, I'll find somebody to answer them as we're all on this path to freedom 
from the bondage of performance Christianity. I uh, want to hear your questions. Make sure you email them to me this month, and starting in January in the new year, we'll go after that. As you uh, think about what you've heard in this episode, I hope you have come away with something that's a takeaway that is not something to do, but something to be. We are to know Christ. That's not a doing thing. That's a, a being thing. Knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. And as we close, I just will remind you, too, to uh, go ahead and uh, claim the 31-day Fresh Faith Experience on our website, freshfaith247.com. Go ahead and get that. Download it. You can either use it now, as a friend of mine is, or hang on to it. It's a download, and you can use it beginning January 1st as your foray into the new year and experiencing fresh faith. Hey, will you do me a favor? Will you tell your friends about Fresh Faith in Real Life? Send them a link to this episode. If you're listening on a podcast app, just use the hit the share button and send that off to them and let them know about this brand new podcast. And if you'd subscribe to it, if you're listening on a podcast app, go ahead and subscribe to it. So each week when we release on Wednesdays, you'll be able to get it fresh out of the box. Okay, so thank you so much.